beautiful. Today I'm showing off my Seiko collection. Let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Seiko. It's been one year since I showed you my Seiko collection. So I thought it'd be a great idea to show you my collection now. Which watches have gone, which watches I've kept, and which ones are new. Now there is no surprise that the brand I review the most is Seiko, because it's my favourite watch brand. Fantastic history, endless amount of designs, the willingness to be bold, countless innovations. When you see a Seiko watch, it doesn't matter if it's square, round, or egg-shaped. It just looks like a Seiko, doesn't it? Now, I've reviewed many Seikos over the last year. Some of the watches I reviewed, I kept. And I have to say, in my opinion, the collection is stronger than it was last year. So, the watches, why I bought them, why I still own them. Can't forget the wife's thoughts on these watches. Sadly, though, I'm going to have to firstly address a very sore subject. The ones that have fallen. You guys know that if I don't wear a watch for long, or if I haven't laid a memory on it, it's out the door. We had to say goodbye to three watches. The first one being the Saab 033. Nowadays, they're extremely expensive on the secondary market. And I bought one because I wanted to experience it. But the watch is too dressy for me. Not really any hints of sportiness at all to it. And I'm a sporty kind of guy. And the watch had to go. Likewise for the Alpinist Saab 017. Yes. It's the Japanese equivalent to the Rolex Explorer. Even though I had it on a NATO strap most of the time, it didn't suit it for me, felt too dressy, and I didn't wear it. So on your bike, son. The other watch that has left the collection is the SNK809. Love this thing to death, and it's not completely gone. I actually lent it to a very close friend, but me doing that opened up another space in the Seiko watch box. <laughs> Are you Seiko ready? Let's go. Right, so first one out of the watch box, and it's one of the first ones that started me off in this crazy watch journey. Spent a lot of money since. <laughs> but here we have the SKX013. This watch came out in 1997, one year after the big boy, and this was the second automatic watch I ever bought. Now over the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to get into citizen dive watches, because at the start of my journey, I went very heavy Seiko. And disregarded citizen. But even though I'm starting to come round on certain citizen references, I'm sorry, they ain't a Seiko. What makes me laugh and cry at the same time is throughout my journey since starting a collection, I've been searching for a type of watch, a type of dive watch, and to be quite honest, the search could have stopped after the second watch, because this one gives me absolutely everything I want. The legible dial, the recognisable case only to Seiko, the jingly jangly cheap jubilee reminds me of the jubilee bracelet that my granddad had on his old Rolex Explorer. And even though some people may say, you are crazy, for some reason it gives me vibes of the old Rolex Submariners. This is ISO certified, divers certified. Yes, it has an outdated movement, the 7S26, but it's the same one that's inside most of the Seiko 5s before they were updated. They are truly reliable workhorses. They can't be hand wound, but that that just means I can give him the Seiko Samba. So this is the wife's thoughts on the SKX013, one of my all-time favourite watches I'll never get rid of. Here we go. <laughs> it's a bit boring, a little bit blingy, it's okay, decent. Not the greatest start, but could have been a lot worse. Now onto a watch I definitely didn't think I would fall in love with. And we are talking about the Save the Ocean Special Edition Samurai. Samurai. Yeah, this watch is big, it's angular, it's different to any other Seiko diver around. But look at that knurling on the bezel and the crown. The grip on these things are fantastic. Like all Seiko divers, this has got a 120 click unidirectional bezel. And Seiko never really suffer from back play. They do suffer from spongy wungy but this one is so satisfying. 
It's got a full R35 in-house movement inside, which is basically the upgrade from the 7S26. This is again diver certified to 200 meters. I'm a big lover of blue, and I love the gradient of the blue on the dial. This watch was actually gifted to me by Clockwork Republic. They are a company that makes solid end links and FKM rubber straps for your Seikos. Now for me, Samurai's with their big chunky stainless steel bracelet just looks a bit too big on my wrist. But put it on one of these babies. And for me, it's an absolute winner. Most of my watches have black dials and to have a really striking blue dial just gives me a little bit more choice in the watch box. And now my wife's thoughts on the Samurai. <laughs> yeah, this is different. It's big, isn't it? That's what she said. It's very blue. Yeah. And it's a little bit spiky. But it's all right. You know, spiky, okay, well, we'll take it. <laughs> the next watch is gorgeous, but it is a warning to all of you out there wanting to buy a vintage watch on eBay. Say hello to my little friend. The 6139, otherwise known as the Pogue. Yes, the 6139 is a very important reference. One, it was the first marketed automatic chronograph. And and it was the first automatic chronograph in, in space. space. Yes, worn on the wrist of William Pogue, thus immortalizing this watch and making it very attractive to Seiko collectors. In comes me, Muggins, not realizing that if something is too good to be true, it's usually not. True. So I bought this watch originally for just under £400, but after a month or so, the watch stopped and condensation was showing inside the glass. It seems as though this watch had been put together with all sorts of crap, not original parts, and the seller would have known this. So it was a huge thank you to Michael at My Retro Watches, awesome YouTube channel. He loves tinkering with old vintage watches, particularly Seikos. He said he'd take a look at it. And from what he said, the movement was that conked out, it should have been put in the bin. But no, Michael brought it back to life and I am eternally grateful to him. And if you like seeing old vintage watches being restored and seeing them tick once again, My Retro Watches is the best place to learn a thing of five. And now the wife's thoughts on a truly historic watch. <laughs> this is ugly, isn't it? This is the one that looks like the beer mat I told you about. You say that this watch was made in the late 60s, early 70s? Well, that is where it should have stayed. Thanks, wife, that was lovely. Next up is a watch that could be on the chopping block. I've basically got it because I'm, I don't know, I'm ticking boxes, you know? And we are talking about the Seiko Flightmaster. Now, if you've been a friend of the channel for long and you've seen the other watches in my collection, you know that I quite like a simple dial. And if I've got one that is busy, busy, I don't really wear it. In actual fact, it makes me think of Citizen. Oh, I'm a big fan of TGV, the Urban Gentry, and this is one of his favorite watches. Also, I'm a fan that it is 200 meters of water resistance. It has a bezel, only friction. It has a screw down crown and screw down pushers. Not only that, you can put the awesome NDC strap on this thing. Goes so well with the yellow chronograph hand. You don't get many Seikos these days with a bubble hard Lex crystal, but it is a watch that doesn't get worn often. And you know me, if I don't wear a watch and it hasn't got a memory attached to it, it's out the door. So here we go. My wife's thoughts on this watch. <laughs> This is just a mess, isn't it? What is exactly the time? Don't like it. Okay. Um, could you just click that like button, please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. Okay, next one, I'm excited. Even though this is not my favorite Seiko that I own, it has become right up there for me. And I am talking about the 55th anniversary recreation of the Seiko 5 Sports. And this watch is special to me for many reasons. The design is fantastic. The case reminds me of the Pogue. And when you put these two watches together, you start thinking that Seiko may, they just may be bringing out a Pogue soon. Seiko haven't made this case in a long, long time. So it is effectively new and exclusive to this reference, as well as the bracelet. And I love the fact that even though this was a limited edition, it did not 
cost an arm and a leg. The other huge thing for me personally, this was sent to me by Seiko and it marks a huge point in this Mad Watch Collector Channel's journey. I never would have thought Seiko would actually send me a watch. And they didn't just send it for me to review, they gave it me to keep. It's a special watch for me in so many ways. It's probably the best release from Seiko in 2023. There, I've said it. But what about that new 62 mass? No, shut up, I've said it, I've said it. The wife's thoughts. <laughs> yeah, this is the one that reminds me of a jacuzzi. It's all right, isn't it? If you can tell me what part of this watch looks like a jacuzzi, then you and my wife's brains are like at one with each other. Because I haven't got a clue. Now to me, at the time when I bought this watch, it was my upgrade to the SKX009. I wanted a Seiko diver with a Pepsi bezel with an in-house movement that hacked, which I could hand wind. Say hello to the mini turtle. This is the special edition paddy version. It's a fantastically sized Seiko diver. Again, ISO certified to 200 meters. It's a tonneau turtley case. Not only do we have the Pepsi colored aluminium insert, but we have this paddy wave dial. And to be fair, I don't have many dials with a pattern on them in my collection. The only thing I wish it didn't have was a date window with a cyclops. If we have a marker at the three o'clock, like we have at the nine, this watch would be nigh on perfect. This watch has been my rock for so many years. I've currently got it on a superb Artem sailcloth strap, which just elevates the premium look of this watch. I've had a look around and I don't think you can buy this watch anymore. Certainly not from Seiko's website. I love it. And here's my wife's thoughts. This one looks a bit cheap, like a toy. Don't really like it. Okay. Next up is one of my finds of the year. It's a watch I knew about for a long time, but was too scared to own it. And we are talking about the now discontinued Landshark. Yes, ever since I got that 55th anniversary Seiko 5 sports watch, I've been scouring Joma Shop at all their Seiko 5s with the old 5 badge on it. This was an entry level mechanical Seiko, but it is awesome. It's not a diver. It's not a field watch. It's both. It has 200 meters of water resistance and it has an inner rotating compass. And it's your typical Seiko bezel action. Cool spongy wunginess. But the amount of personalized detail to this watch is very cool. Like that signed crown at nine o'clock, the handset and the cool dial itself. You can still buy these watches on German Shop's website. And trust me, it will not be long before you can't buy these anywhere. Even on my six and a half inch wrist, this watch looks beautiful. And it has become one of my favorite Seikos in the collection. Okay, energy's high, excitement's high. Now the thoughts from the wife. <laughs> yeah, this one I hate, don't I? Because it looks like a plug. Okay, now we come to steal my favorite Seiko I own, the SPB153, otherwise known as the Willard. Yes, a recreation of a 1960s Seiko, the 6105, worn on the wrists of many US soldiers in the 60s and showcased by Martin Sheen in the hit movie Apocalypse Now. This was a major watch for Seiko as it was one of the first asymmetric watches. Remember what I said about Seiko being innovative and being in the trendsetter. I'm a huge fan of this cushion case and a huge fan of this color green. We're getting into a little bit more premium Seiko. Brand new, these are around a thousand pounds. I got a mega stonking deal at the time at H Samuels. And if it wasn't for that stonking deal, I'm not sure I would have paid that money for it. It houses a 6R35 movement, same beats per hour as the 7S26 and the 4R35 movement, but the power reserve is longer. I'm not that bothered on that and it wouldn't matter if the watch had a fortnight power reserve, it will still run down for me. Anyway, the dial is magnificent and it just gives me old Seiko vibes, you know? It came with a silicon strap I didn't get a great fit with. It's been on an Uncle Straps Tropic strap and it has been a match made in heaven. Now the wife's thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I like this. I like the color green and it's not too busy. Nice. Yes! One out of ten's not bad, is it? No, Next up is probably my second favorite Seiko, and it's a 
Danny Digi. And I am talking about the SNJ025, the remake of the H558 bought and worn by the one and only Arnold Schwarzenegger. But the updates to this watch have made it a very sophisticated bit of kit. It's solar powered now. The crowns are screw in. Again, like most Prospects divers, they are at least ISO certified to 200 meters. I love the bezel action on this thing. I don't know why, but just reminds me of the 80s. Bit different to most Seikos. I love it. This is a tuna style case because it looks like a can of tuna, but this was the first Annie Digi dive watch. Seiko to this day still don't rest on their laurels and they are always striving to innovate and challenge themselves. I feel powerful, strong, confident when I'm wearing this beast. It's the biggest watch in the collection and I don't care. When it's on your wrist, it's one of them watches that just makes you feel good. Cheers, Arnie. Yeah. And here's the wife. <laughs> oh no, this is that Arnold Schwarzenegger one, isn't it? Yeah, to me, it just looks like a giant stopwatch. It's ugly. To be fair, she has got a point, but I love it. Super. Now the last Seiko in the collection is another watch I was gifted, not by a company, but by a certain gentleman called Ian Nicholson, who is hopefully still a fan of the Mad Watch Collector channel. And I am still to this day, truly grateful for his generosity. This is the SBT R027. And in 2023, I think there's a lot of value in a Seiko Quartz chronograph. There are a few Japanese domestic models that are just gorgeous and not expensive. Yes, it has been semi-influenced by the Daytonas, but only in a very faint homage. The dial of this watch is sensational and the detailing like the applied Seiko logo and the refined indices with loom. There is a definite ignition click when you activate the chronograph. You don't get that on the Flightmaster. Now the watch already looked more expensive than it was, but after I put it on an Artem sailcloth strap, well this takes it up another level. And here's the wife's thoughts. Yeah, this is shiny, isn't it? But it's good, it's quite nice, I like it. Shiny but good. Yeah! So there you go, my 2023 Seiko collection. What do you think? I've definitely upped the levels in color from last year. Quick shot of the loom, and last year the winner was the Mini Turtle. This year, the Mini Turtle is still right up there. But look at that Samurai. Proving that the more chunkier the indices, the easier it is to see it. As I said, I think the Flightmaster could be leaving the collection, so it does open up a space. Which watch do you think I should get to add? And whether you think this 10 is better than last year's 10. Thank you so much for watching till the end. And if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you watch last year's show? Yeah, yeah, have a look. See how enthusiastic I was then, huh? Go on, click it, you'll love it. Click it, click, click it.